Thank you for joining iMeet. When you hear the tone, you will be the 21st person to join the meeting. It's now being recorded. We're right there, everybody. I don't think it works on my computer. You can go back to the side. Hey everybody, good afternoon. This is David Blake with uh, Tuesday Tech Talk. And today we're going to uh, just talk quickly, review the last couple of days in the market, try to figure out what uh, what's ahead of us here. Uh, but if you're new to the uh, Tuesday Tech Talk, I usually talk about 25 minutes. Uh, then we open it up to questions. Uh, you can ask about uh, stocks, individual stocks, targets, industries, whatever else is on your mind. Um, Okay, what we're going to try to do uh, today is a little bit different. Uh, I want to point out a few things I think you should have on your radar. And then we're, what we're going to do is take a look at the new site that you can actually ask, access right now. Uh, Matt Sandy is one of the designers, and he's going to demo the site. I'll ask him a couple questions. If you have any questions at all, if you've already been to the new site and you've uh, kind of uh, worked around a little bit and you have a couple questions, please go ahead and uh, type those in now. And that way uh, we can we'll have them ready to go for you when uh, Matt takes over. So just um, I'm going to go ahead and get going here real quickly, and we can get to Matt here as soon as we can. Now, first thing I've uh, changed the charts a little bit because someone said that they can't uh, they couldn't see what was going on before here. So uh, made a little bit green and red. Uh, hopefully you can you can see what's going on a little bit better. But uh, here's the Dow. Um, if you if you were open at the open, we had a huge sell off this morning. The Dow was down about 35 points at one time before uh, all the buyers came in off the sidelines. So that was uh, uh, quite an experience there. But anyway, just just kidding about that. Now the Dow's on a 10-day uh, win streak going into today. We're up about 40 some points right now. We've had nine straight record closes. Look like we'll have a tenth one uh, today. As you can see down here, and I'll get my pointer out, the technical indicators still look very positive. You know, I'm not seeing any negative divergence on the Dow. Um, you know, the 14-day RSI, we are oversold. We're up about 77, 78. The 30-day stochastic is up about nine, at about 99. But uh, you can see this: uh, the longer-term trend line is fine. The 50-day moving average is, is turning up again. Um, a shorter-term trend line is coming in here. We'd have to come back down to about 21.7 before there'd be any, uh, which, which would still be a, a nice en entry point. But uh, nothing negative at all in the Dow except that we're overbought. Um, just because you're overbought doesn't necessarily mean that you're in for a pullback of any magnitude. So uh, that looks fine. We're uh, uh, also being confirmed with that new high by the AD line. This is the NYC AD line. Now, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about negative divergence, which we, we do occasionally on here the last couple of weeks especially. You can see the, 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 the amplitude or whatever of the uh, AD line kind of going sideways, which is kind of a little strange. For the last uh, maybe nine or ten days, we've had more declining issues than advancing issues. That's a, a big red flag uh, when you're having a breakout like this today. However, um, you, you're probably going to get another breakout uh, or another uh, new high on the AD line. So it's, this is, there's some negative divergence going in there, but... As long as the AD line keeps punching out new highs, that's considered a leading indicator of the market direction, and that can, uh, um, you know, still point so we can still work our way a little bit higher. Now, another little bit of a negative divergence is the number of uh, new 52-week highs versus new 52-week lows. You're seeing some contraction in here. Again, it's a little bit of a red flag. It means less and less stocks are breaking out to new highs as, as the Dow is. Um, you'd rather see this, you know, if you get up here around 250 or so, 
uh, and see this thing expanding, that's giving you a little bit more momentum, a little bit more oomph behind the move up. Um, before we go into some of the other indexes, uh, the CTI finished last week at a five, will be at another neg negative five this week. And um, what that means to you, uh, okay, you know, if, if you're new, again, if you're new here, we talk about the CTI a lot lately. Uh, when we're, we have a negative CTI, negative momentum like we have, which is still a negative uh, minus seven, which is very bearish, that means the other indexes are all underperforming the Dow. Um, that means you have a non-confirmed new high in the Dow. However, um, CTI is expected to possibly go bullish at the end of next week. Um, you know, when we, when we have a CTI, it's, you know, generally uh, a negative CTI will point to uh, weakness in the broader market. And just like we had uh, earlier in the year where we had a negative CTI, we had the momentum index starting to go negative, the Dow outperformed, we had uh, a lot of negative divergence, we had the uh, Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones Transportation Index both came down about three, four, five percent. So we did have a, a you know widespread weakness and deterioration in the in the broader market uh, both times during this negative CTI call. But um, you know it all comes down to price at the end. And as long as the Dow keeps marching higher, um, you know we, we it, it's the you know, prices are up. Now what would make us change to a, or a not go to a bullish call at the end of next week would be if. Uh, We'll be watching the, the, the intraday low on the Dow and the S&P 500 this week. If we make a new low on uh, either of those indexes next week, then we would extend the uh, negative CTI out another week, and that could go on as long as we start making new intraweek, uh, intraday lows during the week. If we make a higher low next week, and that's something that we say if we you see the Dow up uh, 300 points, you can pretty much guarantee that we'll go to a uh, a bull bull call in the market, um, and we're going, to, we're going to go over some of the indicators and some of the uh, indexes that I'm looking at that are starting to point that uh, we may get one more uh, surge up here. We'll we'll see what happens there, but but we'll uh, we'll let you know by next week on the in the market letter on Friday that comes out. Uh, but if you see the uh, market up next week a couple hundred points early, uh, there's probably a very good chance that we'll go back to a bullish call on that. Okay, here's the uh, S&P 500. Again, some negative divergence in this and the fact that we're going sideways. We've had about 13 days where this thing has moved less than uh, a quarter of a percentage point. That's one of the, uh, uh, the, the longest periods in history where yeah, the, the thing just doesn't move. However, we're getting a nice move out today. We we're up uh, seven points. To hit, I think we hit 28 or 24.80, 24.90 today, I think. Uh, before we backed off a little bit, so that's that's bullish again. We're breaking out of this uh, congestion period over here, but you do have the negative divergence in the uh, in some of the indicators. You're not you're not getting the confirmation of that new high from the 14-day uh, RSI. And you're also having a little bit of a negative MACD, which uh, this, in this case it's the short-term uh, MACD, which uh, you know kind of indicates the short-term uh, market direction may be a little bit lower. But I think with this, uh, this nine or ten point move today, this will turn up, and um, if that's the case, it can work its way higher again. Here's the Nasdaq. We have this little triangle or pennant uh, formation right here, and despite the negative uh, divergence in the indicators, a break above this uh, 6375, 6400 level um, could mean that we could get another, uh, possibly about another. Uh, 80 to 90 points in the, in the uh, NASDAQ before we run into problems again. That would get this thing up to about 6,500 if that happens. We are above 6,400 right now. We're at 6,422, so a very good shot that we can get a, uh, a run in the NASDAQ up here, um, you know, above 6,500 uh, very easily. Now, this is another more negative divergence. We'll see what it's doing today. We're up uh, about 700 units, so this will come up here. But uh, while the Dow is breaking out the new highs, this, uh, we had a weakness in the NASDAQ AD line, which was not confirming that. In fact, the last time the uh, NASDAQ made a new high, I think, was July 26th. So it's been a, several weeks that it's lagged the Dow. But uh, again, if we if, with this break above 6,400 that we saw in the last chart um, is kind of a bullish signal that we've uh, gone through some of this resistance. Again, negative divergence on the NASDAQ, new high, new low, 
52-week new high, new low uh, uh, chart here, although we had a little bit of expansion in here, and today it looks fairly healthy, but uh, not at the levels you want to see. Even with today's move, we only have 120 new highs versus 50 new lows. You'd like to see that a little bit more. And the fact yesterday and today we're seeing uh, summer volume where uh, you're not getting a confirmation from, the, from uh, heavy volume on this, uh, what may be a new, a new breakout to higher prices. Now, this is something that I, have, I usually don't have shown for a while, but I do want to bring this up as something that uh, one of the charts that you want to look at. Um, this is the weekly uh, bullish percentage of bullish advisors. This is a contrarian indicator. The reason it's a contrarian indicator is that uh, what this is showing, this is showing all the bullish, uh, the professionals that are bullish on the market. And when you get above uh, 55, which is down, down here, it's uh, considered bearish. When you get above 60, it's actually a danger signal. We've been in that uh, above 60 level for quite a while. As you can see back here, we hit 63.6, uh, I believe it was, which was a, a 30 year high. Um, 30 years ago it was back in 1987, so keep that in mind. But when this thing uh, gets above 60, um, it, it's a, another red flag for the market. Now, Investors Intelligence had a, had a piece out last week. They, they're the ones that collect the data, and they made a note that that 64.6%, um, no, actually, sorry, this was 63.1. The 64.6 was the high that we hit in January 1987. And then we, uh, after a little bit of a sideways motion in the market, we got back up to a 60.8 in August of that year. And of course, then uh, stocks crashed in uh, October 1987. You know, they, they say things may be different this time, but I, I hate when I hear that things are different this time. That, uh, that kind of scares me just as much as these numbers. But that's something you want to keep in mind that, uh, again, the reason that's a, a bearish uh, or a contrarian indicator is if, every, if, they're, if everybody who's bullish and says they're bullish, it means they're, they're fully invested, uh, which means you're, going, you're lacking the, the, the firepower, the money to, to, get, to, to move the, the market much higher. On the flip side, you're all the way down here. Who's bearish? No one's bearish anymore. This is the uh, percentage of weekly uh, of bearish per, uh, advisors, and this is down here to 162 the last time it got down this low was uh, in July of 2015. That's not, not particularly because we had a lot of bullish advisors. It was because everybody was uh, in the correction camp. We had about 42% of uh, advisors were looking for a crash. So, uh, again, um, if these people are bearish, they don't have any money on the sidelines to, uh, to go into the market to help uh, you know, make it higher. So, again, that's something you want to watch where we're making, uh, you know, New lows in that. That's just that's that shows the sentiment is still a little bit frothy. Okay, a couple more charts, and I'm going to bring Matt in here. Uh, this is the Dow Jones Transportation Index, and uh, what I want you to see on this, we talked about this in the market letter last week. We came down here, we broke through the 50, broke through the 100, and we came right down to the 200-day moving average, which is uh, a big support level. But uh, traders and investors will watch that. Uh, bounced off of that, came up above the. Uh, the um, 100-day moving average, and then today we're back, and yesterday we came back above the, uh, the 100 again. I thought we, were, we actually went below it for a, a, a second this morning, uh, but now we're back above that. We're above 9,300, so we're up here. We're getting close to the pivot point, which would be 9,364, where you're going to start to see uh, traders want to get long the transports. Um, looking at some charts, I'm not, not going to show you here right now, but uh, I do like the... Uh, uh, the airlines in here again. They 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 had a little bit of a pullback in here, and, and they're starting to look good. Maybe we'll, we'll, we're going to probably look at some uh, transports next week, uh, some of the different areas. But again, you had this little sell as a rollover on this thing, and now we're under accumulation again. This is the bullish sign. If we're at, uh, like I say we're at 93.22, we get above uh, 9400, especially that's the 50-day moving average. That's going to be another bell go off that uh, the market's getting maybe maybe ready for a fresh leg up. Okay, uh, another one we've been talking about a little bit was the uh, Russell, the, the Russell 2000, which is a small cap index. We came down here, broke below the 50-day uh, moving average last week. We see this down here. We spent about three or four days trying to get above it. Uh, we broke above that today at 1426. So we're back above the pivot point on the uh, Russell 2000. That's bullish. And um, you know, you'll see some uh, uh, these things improve in the technical indicators. 
Uh, I would say if we can get above, let's, let's say get above 1430 to 1440, that area, uh, you might see the Russell 2000 start heading back to that uh, 1450 new high area. 1450 will be resistance at this stage, but uh, this is good improvement in this thing too, especially getting above the, uh, um, uh, the pivot point. Now, one of the reasons I, th I think you're seeing the, the whole market, but especially the Russell 2000, uh, index starting to turn around like this is uh, is, is a lot of talk on uh, out there that as soon as Congress comes back, we're, we're going to uh, see uh, that they're going to try to tackle some kind of tax reform as soon as they come back. Small caps would be the biggest benef beneficiary of that. So um, again, if that, if that uh, conversation starts to pick up again, you, you could see the Russell break out to new to new highs. Okay, the best performing sectors over the last week were industrials. XLI, they were up one, over 1%. One uh, the main reason for that is because of the next chart we're going to see, which is the uh, U.S. dollar. Uh, we, we had the UUP, which is the, uh, the dollar ETF. We had a $24 target on that. We came down last week, I think, to $23.98. We said that would be oversold, and we could, we'd probably get a bounce off that. We'll look at that. Uh, utilities are up, were up 1%. Part of that was because the 10-year Treasury yield uh, continues to get – was Went from like 2.6 a couple weeks ago down to 2.25. We've gotten a little bit of a uh, uptick in the yield, still like 2.28. Uh, that's up from 2.23, I think, about a week ago, uh, which is helping out the financials. And part of that is also because the dollar is getting an oversold bounce in here. Then we had technology. You've seen a, a big move in the big cap uh, names again. Uh, you know, the Googles, the Facebook, the Apples, they're all uh, – Breaking out to new highs again, and here's the financials going to. Uh, they're, they're starting to uh, take the lead again, which would be also indicate that we could get that another breakout to new highs here uh, starting really soon. Okay, here's the XLF financial. Uh, again, you can see we're, we're breaking out to a new high again today, which is uh, bullish. That's supported by accumulation down here, and the indicators are going to start to uh, are also confirming that we can go higher in the in the uh, uh, XLF financials. And here you can see, especially the, the MACD is about ready to go positive again. Um, that's probably um, you know, where you we, before we've, we've told you you want to be in, in this sector and buy it on the pullbacks. Um, I don't know. I don't want to know. I want to chase, but uh, you want to make sure you have some financials in your, in your portfolio. And here's that UUP again. We told you said we, we should going back. I had a two or three year chart last week that. Uh, showed that 24 would be the uh, support level on that. We actually went down to about 23.98, and we, we bounced off of that. Here you can see the oversold 14-day uh, RSI. Still not a lot of accumulation in, this, in the UUP. That's why I believe this is just a uh, oversold bounce. I think we can probably get up here around 24.36, 24.30, and maybe 24.60 maybe uh, on this oversold bounce, and then we can, and we'll have to see what happens with uh, some of the economic data that comes out uh, from here. Okay, now I'm going to, go into write, write down a couple of questions here that we have in, in here. Is there a way of putting your own stocks on a list that would take the new charts on a daily basis without having to type it at all? Okay, Mike, Matt, I want you to take a listen to some of these, and we're, and we're going to let, turn this over to Matt in a second. So they want to know right now if you can a way of putting your own stocks in a list that would take you to the new charts on a daily basis without having to type everything in every time. Um, second question, not necessarily on the new site. If North Korea results in the U.S. embargo or worst case is some kind of war, does the market crash? Does history tell us anything? Yeah, the market initially will crash, and then uh, you, you just want to be out of it because you never know how it's going to react. Uh, and with nuclear weapons, I think you... Uh, no one knows how, how a market would re react with that. Is there a new one, a new site to simply see strong buys on a daily basis? Yes, there is. And there's also on the old site, you can do that too, Frank. You, you go to stock analysis or go to uh, trading ideas and hit stock analysis and then go to best longs. That'll give you about 95% of the strong buys. How many advisors are asked to make this chart? Uh, good question on that. I, I I don't know, but I know intel investors intelligence. It's 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 uh, you know in the thousands. So they they have a weekly poll that they do that guys send that in uh, to get those numbers for the uh, bullish advisors and bearish advisors. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close this thing down and we're going to bring Matt in. I'm going to ask him a couple questions. 
um, about the site. He's going to see what he can do and give you a little bit of an overview. Again, while this is going on, go ahead and keep uh, bringing that on. Now, one thing I did want to point out, if you haven't gone to the new beta site, um, Matt's going to tell you how you can get started, but there's a link on all the uh, uh, different sites for you to go to. And let me pull the new site up. Can you see it? Okay. Matt, uh, why don't you go ahead and take over, and uh, again, the questions will show up on, on the bottom there. You can keep asking. All right. I guess that, before we get started here, first thing I want to uh, ask you, uh, in a nutshell, what were you trying to accomplish for uh, our, our subscribers when you, uh, you know, redesigned the site? Sure. So we were trying to refresh the look um, while keeping it, keeping everything in basically the same place. So um, we, we were trying to refresh the look and also emerge some features that users might not have known were there. Um, and also add some features. So um, up here in our market indicators, uh, there were some things that were buried in the market letter. Um, here, like the market posture and the CTI, here we've just um, you know, brought it to the fore so that you don't need to read through the letter to look at it necessarily. You can see it right there. We've got our, market, our second opinion performance in this nice graph here. Um, We've also got, is everything working right? Yeah. Okay. We've also added some hover over stuff. So here on our market edge upgrades, basically wherever you see a symbol, you can hover over it for this little um, chart that'll pop up. Uh, so you don't have to either go to the quick charts area on the old site or go to smart charts. So you could take a quick look at this chart to see you know, basically whatever you're looking for. Um, markets is our news feed, among other things. It's also got, so it's got news on the left, it's got some market-wide indicators on the right. Um, on the second opinion report, what's different on this? I know, you know you've added some charts sure. that uh, make it a little easier. So let me, let me search for a stock real quick. So you can search by symbol, you can search by company name. I'm going to pull up Apple. Um, We've got a couple things here that are new. We've got a chart on the second opinion. If you hover over it, it'll show you monthly. If you go off of it, it'll show annual. We've got the ability to add. So if I'm on Apple and I want to add this to one of my stock watch lists, you hit this, it's going to show you all your lists. You can add this stock to any of these uh, lists, any of these stock watch lists from the um, from the, the second opinion report. You can also view which industry group it's in and which, what the state of that industry group is. So apples and computers and information, and it's deteriorating. So that's a relatively new feature. You can also jump to smart charts from, or I'm sorry, our new version of smart charts from this um, second opinion page. Also, another thing that we've added is for all the technical terms, like power rating, some of our users might say, what is a power rating? Um, basically, wherever you see a term, we've got this question mark. You can click the question mark. It's going to give you a definition of what that term is. We tried to keep our definitions pretty snappy and brief so that it wasn't a long book of, you know, of stuff. Um, Showing the menu on the right-hand side, because I know a lot of, of our users often didn't even know that they had these uh, other features. Yep, so here's an example of one of the places where we said, okay, well, we're going to try to emerge some stuff that people didn't know was there. On the old site, there was just a drop-down, and the default, you just went to second opinion. You'd then have to go up to the drop-down to select company profile, these other things. Here, they're just right here. You can click through them at your leisure, readily available stuff. Um, we've added a more uh, detailed quick chart where you can zoom over periods of time, you can uh, enhance so that you can increase the period of time that you're viewing. Um, point and figure chart is the old point and pick figure chart, pretty much the same there. Um, Technoscan opens up a Technoscan report, which is a bit more, which is oh, basically what we, what we were thinking with this is it's a, it's a pretty detailed report but it's also very easily printable for people who are out there who want to print stuff and mark it up or do whatever you want with it, send it to your broker. 
Yeah. Uh, one thing about it uh, for a subscriber that haven't seen the TechnoScan report, this is a three-page report that the uh, summary is, uh, uh, is spread out. We take the uh, indicators, we let you know what's strong and weak over the short term and the inter intermediate term. We also have a calendar of technical events on here where um, uh, as things technically begin to happen, you'll see every you'll see these things flip over. Now, in this case, on this, this is on Apple. Everything's been bullish since uh, uh, well, for, going on for quite a while here. Or is this Apple or what is this? Apple? Yeah. Oh, this is Apple. Okay, but then uh, as, as it's interesting with the uh, technical events. If you're following a stock and you start seeing a couple of the uh, indicators flip over to bearish, uh, it usually will, it will it's a good early indication that uh, we're nearing a top on something. But this is kind of like the old S&P tear sheets, and uh, it's a much more detailed, much more in-depth uh, uh, report for you to look at. Yeah. So that's technical scan. Um, industry groups are now its own tab. You get a little count over here of the number of industry, of, of industry groups that are in a particular category, whether it's strong, improving, so on and so forth. Um, ETF Center, which basically the same be idea. Or sure, we'll get to that. Okay. Stock Watch. Um, also, we have the ability to hover over and see a chart. We can also add um, stocks from one list to another. So if you have a list that's your you know, your watch list and you buy one, you can go to the watch list and add it to your own list from within that list. Again, also here we have uh, uh, definitions for some of these terms, for all of these terms, actually. And one thing that a lot of people wanted to do was get the ability to export. Um, you can export your watch lists. You can actually export most lists by clicking this export watch list icon. So you hit that, it's going to download it, and then it's going to, uh, to basically just give you an Excel file um, that should pull up. And sometimes this doesn't work on our screen share, but it looks like it is working. Good. And how do you add stocks uh, or make new lists on this? Sure. To add stocks, you just enter a symbol right down here. You can type whatever you want in, and you basically just hit the stock, and it'll add it to this list. So ASG right there. And, and, and to create a new list? To create a watch list, you hit Create Watch List, and you just enter the name and hit Next. Um, trading ideas. A lot of this stuff was buried. Um, and a lot, so the guy earlier asking about where to get the best longs, they're right in here. Um, trading ideas, stock analysis, you can hit Best Longs. That's going to pull up our best longs. Um, another thing that we added for these these uh, screens, so on trading ideas, some, a lot of these fit a certain criteria. We t we're telling you what they are. So best longs is a little bit more self-explanatory, but um, we've given you a definition of what these screens are and why you might care about what's in them. Um, so that can be found basically just by hitting this question mark right next to the screen. Um, you can also export these. You can also hover over them for a chart. You can also add these to one of your stock watch lists from that page. Now, can, can you go back to the uh, stock, uh, stock watch list again? Yeah. Show them where they, they're going to find their filters and sure. uh, where you had before. With filters are right here. And stuff. Yeah. So if I want to get my upgrades, no upgrades today. If I want to just see my avoids, here's my avoids, my, just my longs. It's going to show you just your longs, your neutral from long, so on and so forth. So. That is how you filter. And you can, so when you select a filter, so I'm going to pick long, it's going to show me long right here. So I can either hit this X to remove the filter. I can also just hit the long, and that'll remove the filter too. You can delete lists just by hitting this delete. Now, I don't want to delete this list. So we also popped up this thing asking you, are you sure you want to do this? I don't want to delete it, so I'm going to hit no. But if you do want to delete it, you hit yes and it deletes the list. You can also make a list default. So if I want to hit income and growth and make that, what's a, what's a list that doesn't have a lot in it? Um, 19, here we go. So you can also make a list your default list. So this thumbs up, I hit that. Dad portfolio is now my default list. So now whenever I go to Stockwatch, that's going to be the list that loads. So I hit Stockwatch it's going to be dad portfolio. 
if I if I want to change my default to international developed, I just click on it, I hit make default, now the default is international development. One other thing I want to show you that you can do from a stock page is jump from that second opinion to uh, the stock watch, to the stock watch list. Looks like we're having an internet lag. Here we go. So from the uh, second opinion, I can open this in our charting tool, which is, um, it's new, it's not smart charts entirely yet, but we're working on it um, and pushing stuff to and, and making updates constantly, like every week. Um, so let me just get you there. So we hit this. It's going to update. It's going to um, put that open that that particular stock through the page you were on in smart charts. Here's my smart charts. I can add. Um, I can do a different chart type theme if I want. I can do dark light, you can do OHLC, you can do line, so on and so forth. We'll stick it to keep it a candlestick for now. Got a variety of indicators. Drawing um, tools. Oh yeah, there's drawing tools as well. It's a variety of indicators that you can add. So if I want to add uh, an Arun, I can turn that on. We got an Arun down here. You can add basically an un, basically as many indicators as you want. We've got a number available. You can also remove those indicators. So if I want to lose RSI, I can do that. Uh, we've got definitions for all these indicators right here. Minimize and see if we have any more questions coming in. Up here. Uh, let me just show drawings. Okay. Point. All right. So annotations, we can do a trend line. We can do a Fibonacci retracement. We can do a channel. We can remove all of them. And you can do whatever you want with those things. Um, finally, you can compare Apple APO with another stock. So I'm going to compare it with Apple. It'll get Apple's chart data and compare and zero them out at a certain point in time, which is basically the beginning of this, the beginning of the chart, and then compare those stocks' performance against each other. So APO is light blue, Apple is dark blue. You can tell that from up here. Um, Let's see if we have any questions. I mean, and we're check, checking for questions. Do we have? Yeah, we got a seven. And we check for questions. How do the new? Uh, how do subscribers get uh, involved with this? Okay. Yeah. So to get um, access to beta, um, law, uh, send us an email. Send us an email to support at marketedge.com. Um, so support at marketedge.com and we'll walk you through it, basically. Um, it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy. Um, strong we should, we answer that one. That one. We answer that one. That one. Good. Looks way okay. okay, so the, the thing with the export function is it only shows what, um, okay, let me walk you through how that one works exactly. So I'm on Stockwatch, right? So I go to Dad's portfolio. Now, I'm showing 19, so are the way that, let's go to fast growing real quick, because it has more stocks in it. So this has 257 results. Down here, you can do rows per page to show 20, which is the default, um, 40, which will now show 40, 60, so on and so forth, up to 100. Um, and now if I were to export, this will be a list of 100 stocks. So we export it. It calls it what it is. It's this is fast-growing company, and we've got 100 symbols here, all exported. 101 because of the header column. Um, we've limited it at 100 for now, um, partially for performance purposes, but export will only export the number of stocks that you have available showing in that table right now. And I, I don't want to get too far into the weeds on how that works, but that's ba that's the basic idea. Um, so right now, I've changed it to 20. It will export 20. Partially, we didn't want people pulling our entire list um, and exporting that into, into a spreadsheet. Um, but for the moment, um, it's 20. Uh, your watch lists are, will move over from your 
from the old site, from your existing login. Let's see. Exploit. So Frank or RM Swain, that should answer your question there. We're, we'll eventually allow you to export probably everything from whatever list, um, but we don't have that at the moment. Okay, I'll take this one. For the industry group, uh, you're, you're correct. We don't have, every stock does not have an industry group. We're trying to add more and more to that, and um, uh, the, the, the part of that is because that's our proprietary uh, uh, industry group analysis. But we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're working on that to get it uh, updated. Yeah. Um, can you sort best longs by sector and by stock and by ETFs? Huh. Can we yeah, Frank, I, I, I'm not sure about that. I, I, uh, Frank, if you'll send that question to, to uh, the doc at marketedge.com, I'll take a look at that and get back with you on that. Uh, there's a question there about MTN. I looked at MTN, uh, Vail Resorts, earlier today. Uh, it looks fine. It's in uh, it's in the financial group where uh, uh, I, I believe it's 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 in a good sector that you want to be in. Uh, it had a little bit of a pullback. It looks to me like we're uh, actually heading up to new highs on that again. I think 217 is the uh, would be up, upside resistance if we can break through that. Uh, I think it was like 225. And if you're at Elliott Wave first, it looks like it's probably in the uh, fifth leg of uh, Elliott Wave uh, up move, which means you. I could I could measure that for you later on, but uh, I think I think uh, as long as the market c continues to go higher, MTN should move higher with it, and uh, 225 I think would be your uh, target. You know the smart chart, see the history stock movement. Uh, SK, that's uh, as far as adding earnings or dividends on the smart chart, it's not uh, in the works as as of, as of right now. Uh, you, you'll have to go to the financials on the on the uh, sec on the stocks page to find that. But um, one of the things that we wanted to, one of the big changes is now the site can be, the site is a, is a lot more, um, it's easier for us to add stuff. So if you guys have ideas like that, send us those ideas. And a lot of times, uh, a lot of, let me show you one other thing that I forgot to mention. Um, one of the examples of a idea that came in from a customer is um is this ability to collapse the menu to show so like i'm on a longer report type here so i have to scroll a little bit to see it you can also do this um one of our customers said hey how about you just allow the ability to collapse this menu so we just we did that so it's easier now with the new site to be able to um to make those sorts of changes so when you come up when you have an idea like like that thing like uh you know, earnings on a chart, send it to us and just say, hey, here's an idea. Um, you know, can you guys implement it? And a lot of times we can. Um, Tencent in your list. Hey, Frank, the reason why we don't have Tencent uh, in our uh, followed right now is because it's a pink sheet and the data that we import in for our uh, a site, uh, we don't bring in uh, the pink sheets. If it, you know, as soon as it gets listed, um, or it goes on the regular NASDAQ, it, we'd be glad to, uh, to, to put it in. Okay, listen, that's about uh, uh, long as we can go today. Uh, again, if you have any more questions, uh, you know, go ahead and send them in to support at marketedge.com. Um, we appreciate you all of you taking some time out of your busy day to join us today. I hope you got something out of it. I think Matt and uh, the guys have done a really great job on the new site, getting some stuff to, to make it more usable. Uh, make your investment process a little bit easier. If you have questions for Matt, you can also send them to, to uh, uh, support at marketedge.com, and they'll get them to that. Uh, next week, we'll uh, see whether this market's going to uh, roll over finally with this, this negative divergence, or whether we're actually have already seen the uh, a little bit of the broader market uh, have, have its little bit of a correction, which wasn't much at all, a little bit of weakness, and we're going to head, head higher. So we'll... Uh, See what's going on, a uh, little bit crazy market, and uh, we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Thanks. Yep, thanks, guys.